Okay, so we're going to start filming 16C. There's a 16A and B. Now we're going on to C. And line C is part 78. And it's going to be called line CB Opera Elf Opal Muon Detector Neutrinos My Thoughts of 16A, B, and C. Okay. So that's 16. See there. Okay. Okay, so 16A, um, which is about the stereographic projection time lapse function, spherical Plucker coordinates in Euclidean Minkowski space. 16B is relativity, hyperbolas, neutrino, muon, Einstein, kinetic, energy, opal, elep, CERN detector, and then line 16B and C, because during line 16B, of course, the camera died. And, uh,. I don't even know if I got the thoughts done for 16B or not. I forget what I filmed. <laughs> oh, this is bad. <laughs> okay, so 16B. Um, sorry. I don't even know where I left off. Sorry. It was two days ago, so I've kind of lost here. So 16B, we we're talking about the Opal experiment at LEP. And that's the Opal in China. That's what it looked like. I think this is the last thing we're talking about, this Petrino thing here. And then I was talking about the blog post that I found up in a terse preemptory sounding paper posted online on September 29th. Andrew Cohen and Sheldon Glasshow of Boston University calculate that any neutrinos traveling faster than light would radiate energy away, leaving a wake of slower particles analogous to the sonic boom of a supersonic fighter jet. Their findings cast doubt on the veracity of measurements recently announced at CERN and posted online here that clocked neutrinos going a sliver faster than light. 60 nanoseconds is what they said. The blogs is dot scientific America American dot com degrees of freedom. I'll be putting the blog post and the link to it up on my Victoria Stafford, A Psychic Investigation. That's where I put everything up on WordPress for you. The result announced at CERN on September 23rd, although the news had leaked out ahead of time, was certainly unexpected. By now, if you haven't heard of it, you must have been a strangler from the Imperial Japanese Army coming out of Ioma's tunnels. Anyway, to recap, the war in the Pacific is over and a team of physicists has released data on neutrinos. They beamed through the Earth's crust from Geneva to the Grand Sasso Massif near Rome in an experiment known as Opera. I believe that was where we were talking and then my camera died. According to the physicists' estimates, the neutrinos arrived at destination around 60 nanoseconds too fast, violating the cosmic speed limit set by Albert Einstein's theory of relativity. Basically, he was, his theory of relativity that we found out was that nothing can go faster than the speed of light, and these things did. So, Opal was one of the major particle physics experiments at CERN. Opal studied particles and their interactions by collecting and analyzing electronic position, pos positron collision events at LEP, the large electron positron. Con Collider, LEP, was the largest particle accelerator in the world. There were three other air exper experiments at LEP, LEP, Delphi, and L3. You can take an interactive tour of the particle adventure, or you can be a particle detective, identifying interesting particle physics interactions taken by Opal. So that's a fun site to go to, opal.web.cern.ch forward slash opal forward slash um, there's games on there and stuff to do with these little neutrinos. It's kind of a fun little science thing. So we're going to go on to 16C now. The next thing was the opal detector that I found online. Um, it says 12 years of physics at opal. The opal experiment and the LEP collider started operation in August 1989. Data taken finally ended on November the 2nd, 2000. The first and the last OPAL event. The scientific evaluation of the data will continue for many more years. 
The two phases of LEP operations were LEP-1 from 1989 to 1995, where millions of Z events were accumulated for high precision measurements. In these events, the electron and the positron produced a single Z boson. LEP-2, 1996 to 2000, where the collision energy was increased to make W plus W minus pairs and to search for possible new particles or physical effects. The links above lead to descriptions of the physics objectives of OPAL and to pictures of typical electron-positron collision events. So this is the diagram here. These are your muon detectors right here. This is an electromagnetic calorimeter, hadron cal calorimeters and return yoke are these yellow things. The red is the jet chamber. This little purple thing is the vertex chamber, and this is the micro vertex detector. There's the words there. Okay. Go down here a bit. This is called the Z chamber. This is a solenoid and pressure vessel. Sorry. <laughs> Time of flight detector, pre sampler, silicon tungsten luminator, lumin luminant meter forward detector and then this is Z, X, and Y with its quotient. So, okay. so the OPAL detector experiment and LEP collider started operation in 1989. Data taking finally ended on November 2, 2000. The OPAL detector was a large multi-purpose particle detector. The detector was sighted on the LEP accelerator at CERN and measured the results of interactions between electrons and positrons which collided at the center of the detector. That was the thing that I was talking about when I say the thing that you use for the, the center. Okay. The incoming electrons and positrons approached the center of the detector from opposite directions along the beam pipe. The beam pipe was an excavated straight metal cylinder of a few centimeter radius passing right through the middle of opal. It provides a natural axis of symmetry to the detector. The components of the detector were arranged outside the beam pipe in a layered structure rather like the layers of an onion. Okay, so it's 12 meters long, 12 meters high, and 12 meters wide. It was dismantled in 2001, but we continue to look at the data it created for many years, it says. Okay. And over here I've got the opal muon detector. This shows you another diagram. The muon detector is constructed as a barrel and two end caps and covers the iron yoke almost completely while muons penetrate to the muon detector and leave a single clean crack track. Most hadrons are absorbed are absorbed the yolk. That's not my typing, that's theirs. So hadron I had to look up what a hadron was. It is a composite particle made of quarks held together by the strong force as atoms and molecules are held together by the electromagnetic force. Hadrons are categorized into two families, baryons made of three quarks and mesons made of one quark and one antiquark. The best known hadrons are protons and neutrons, both baryons, which are components of atomic nuclei. All hadrons except protons are unstable and undergo particle decay. However, neutrons are stable inside atomic nuclei. The best known mesons are the pion and the kaon, which were discovered during cosmic ray experiments in the late 1940s and 50s. Um, okay, so we're not going to go there. That's on our wiki, Hadron, H-A-D-R-O-N. Okay. So we'll go over here. Particles in physics. These are quarks and leptons. That's the different types that they have. Bosons. We've already talked about those in previous videos, okay? So if you look at the videos from um, 1 up to 79, well, actually this series, the Wow SETI signal, I believe starts at 42. So if you look around the part 42 and up, you'll find it. And C, 16C notes, my thoughts, lines A, B, and C go, line B, then line 16C, okay. So let's go to the thoughts here. Okay, so we're going to go to this one that says what's filmed. Uh, hold on here. I don't think you guys mind if I read. 
No, I don't think I got to this part. Okay, so if I do go over it, I'm sorry. I don't remember doing it, so. Okay, so January 20, 2012, 3.31 p.m. Eastern Standard Time is when I wrote the notes about line, te uh, line 16C and B. Yeah, this is part of it. Okay, line 16C will be a continuation of line 16B. My battery died during filming. So I always leave notes for myself so I remember stuff. <laughs> it's been two days, so I don't remember back that far. We will review the data from line 16A, B, and C, and some from line 15, A, B, C, D, E, F, as it's related to one another. So basically, whatever information you find between 15 and 16, it's all connected. So you want to watch all the videos, okay? So January 20, 2012, 1.13 p.m. Eastern Standard Time is when I wrote this note. My thoughts. Doing the research, and I find the original article where I learned about neutrinos and the current testing from CERN on whether or not they can travel faster than the speed of light. So that ar article I just told you about was actually the first article I came across and I didn't actually, um, I didn't put it up the first time and then when I went back over the notes I thought well maybe I should because thanks to the author I found out a, a lot of information that I didn't know anything about. Okay, so then I find this picture of Opal which is a test and they did they did at CERN. And now I find this diagram that explains more about bosons, quarks, particles, terms that we were in the last few videos and we didn't understand exactly what they were used for. The words kept coming up. I kept getting these diagrams and stuff, but I still didn't have a clue what what they're used with. So obviously they have something to do with neutrinos, which is kind of cool. Isn't this cool? This has been happening throughout this whole series. Every five or six videos, we get the data, then something that brings up an explanation. Five videos later, weird or what? And that is true. Through this whole series, we go through the data about three or four videos, and then the last two videos will be explanations about the previous videos, and it, it brings up information that explains it. So we also learned that what makes a boson plus or minus in the other videos too. For a quote, the kinetic energy of the muon is its energy, lest its rest energy. We had kinetic energy come up before in muon, which is a particle that was supposedly the smallest in the universe several years ago. And now in 2012, January, we find out that the muon isn't the smallest particle, a neutrino is. This is the list of topics in line 16a, 16b, 16c, and the Wild SETI radio signal received August 15, 1977. I started to decipher it December 2011 and then I'm also deciphering it in January 2012. The mathematical equation for line 16 and 17 is, no sorry, line 16b, sorry. Mathematical equation is 0 0.0001. So that's the answer to the actual mathematical equation and then what I do is I google those numbers and I look and see what comes up and then I post it on here for you guys to look at in case you're just joining us for the first time. There are 100 videos. Actually, I've been saying there's only 100 videos. Guess what? As of line 17, I have 100 videos. I have another 10 lines of data to go through. So I think we're going to go over the 100. Well, I know we're going to go over 100 videos. When I get to the end, I'll go back and then change the information on, on the videos. My first set of videos say there's only 15 which is what I started with and then I'm up to 100 and now I think I'm going to be up to 110, 120 maybe, if not more. Because there's a lot of data popping up here. Stereographic projection time lapse, function mathematics, geographical coordinate system, cylindrical and spherical coordinate systems, Plucker coordinates, Euclidean space and Min Minkowski space, Theory of Special Relativity of Einstein, Superluminal Neutrinos, Hyperbolas, Neutrinos Travel Faster Than Light, Kinetic Injury of the Muon, The Opal Experiment uh, LEP 1989-2000, The Opal and Muon Detector, and my thoughts line 16A, B, and C. We can see that the words neutrino plus kinetic energy plus muon plus opal, muon, and opera, opera experiments are somehow tied in together. 
I think they want you to put the data from all six testing facilities and see if you can con can combine it together to make something new. I just did the same word twice there. I wonder if I left out a word. Sorry. <laughs> okay, creating a more powerful force that can be used in a rocket jet propulsion energy. Look at the data from relativity jet particles from the black holes and see if this can be used in any way with neutrinos to add some power to your particles and the gases in the engines. Now I wrote this a couple days ago and I've been meditating ever since and I came up with some new stuff that has is that is in relation to that. So um, you're going to really want to look at line 17 as well. It's tied in with 16 and 15 and also I'm going to post an alien message that I received too. Some more. Uh, I got another mathematical equation and I'm going to do a, a separate video from that altogether, okay? Relativistic jets and black holes are studied in line 15D. Actually, it ties in with other mathematical equations and functions that you might need to calculate. The speed and velocities required for the UFO space engine that you will have to build. So I would see lines 15A, B, B2, C, D, D2, E, and F. Also look at all the data about neutrinos in line 15 and line 16 series of videos. I give a list of videos where it comes up with other mathematical equations, functions, calculations, tests, and theories from physicists from all over the world. Data comes up with the wow SETI math equations found in the 1977 alien radio contact signal. So there's line 16A, 16B, and C showing all the different topics that come up with that. There's the opal muon detector, and this is opal at CERN China, and this is all types of hadrons have zero total color charge. So there's no color charge in them. They just added the color here to show you how a hadron works. So, um, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I put some pictures there so you can take a look at that. Then we're going to go to line 16 C's notes. And there's the three there. A and B, the line 16 C. Okay. Okay, um, during the 16 C, okay, this is it. Okay, I see. I made a page note for my to finish B and C together. So this also popped up while I was looking for those pictures and it says ALEPH January 20th 2012 3.50 p.m. ES. ALEPH is a particle physical experiment in solid lab. The large electron position positron collider at the CERN laboratory in Geneva Switzerland. LEP produced its first collision in July 1989 and since then millions of events have been recorded by the AL EPH particle detector. Its purpose is to explore the standard model of particle physics and search for manifestations of new physics. So it's a large collaboration of several hundred physicists and engineers from 32 universities and national laboratories from around the world. That's a big project. Wow. Okay, so that's it for that one. Next is going to be line 17. Um, just for the record, Line 17 now has videos from A up to T, and I still am not done with all the data. Line 17 is very detailed, so what I did is broke it down into little segments. They're going to be shorter videos, I hope, uh, and they're just going to be concentrating on each thing individually because a lot of the stuff that comes up in 17 talks about the answers to the videos from lines 1 up to 17 and answers a lot of questions. Okay?